Hi guys, Brain here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the PTB that uh, released today having to do with 8.3.0 update that is soon coming to the game. This update is kind of controversial and kind of interesting in the sense that it is almost like a minor, like a diet <laughs> perk shakeup. Uh, it is not officially listed as so as a meta perk shakeup, but it kind of ended up being a small one and has some very significant changes to characters. Others uh, also got changes as well. DLDR, there's a lot to get through, so let's go ahead and not waste any time and get into it. So, first off, Skull Merchant is probably the most infamous change to come out of this uh, B2B update is because Behavior themselves, if you are not aware, did admit directly to saying that they intentionally are trying to make Skull Merchant uh, not enjoyable and not very playable uh, and hold off on that until her confirmed rework. We finally got a date for that for next year around this time in 2025. So their their game plan literally was to make this character intentionally bad and then revisit it later in a year. So essentially, if you uh, have any even a passing interest in Skull Merchant, you are stuck with a, a terrible character until next year, uh, which they did confirm themselves. So yeah, obviously there's a lot of controversy around that, but how did the character actually play in the PTB in the public test build? They're not the worst character in the game. It kind of just depends on who you think is the worst character in the game. I feel like they are on par with Myers. But also, like, Tombstone Myers is better than Scorcher. But then again, Tombstone Myers is better than a lot of killers just because he can just mori people right away. Um, I think if I compare anything, it's almost like double stock Myers. Like, I feel like Myers with stock and duration is probably better than current Skull Merchant, or at least in the PTB. But uh, every other version of Myers, like uh, double stock is kind of equ equitable. Uh, Scratch Mirror, Vanity Mirror, I feel like those are worse. Um, if you're one of those people that thinks Freddy is the worst in the game, I can definitely see that because she's kind of similar in the sense that she has a, does technically have a chase ability, but it doesn't really do a whole lot. I'm looking at you snares. <laughs> I'm looking at you snares. Um, so it kind of feels vaguely similar to that, so she is kind of a bottom three killer. She may not be the worst character in the game, but she's she's definitely down there now. And, and then they admitted that was the game plan. So I, I think that's really disappointing. That kind of gets into its own video of like, why are we like cool with just like ruining all the hours and money somebody's invested into a character just because. But that's its own video, so I won't get too deep into that. In terms of other killers, Unknown can still do the edge tech that uh, we were afraid was going to go away, but it's like not comfortable and kind of an accessibility problem because you literally do have to mash the button to avoid the new slowdown that happens when you ready up your UVX. So um, <laughs> somebody made the joke midstream, like you should get a macro for that, <laughs> which is really, really funny. And it's not that bad, but like, yeah, you do really have to be like, hammering the, the the mouse consistently there was even times where i kind of like slipped and messed it up and kind of pressed it out of tempo and then like i got the extra slowdown that they added to the character um vanishing box on this character got nerfed pretty severely added an 80 percent extra charge time to your hallucinations uh, which is your macro pressure so the fact that that just got turbo nerfed on his most popular add-on was kind of silly for no reason i generally don't like that as a change because it's just like i don't think vanishing box was bad or overpowered i think it was just like a very good add-on which is nice. So it feels like we're just being punished for using what they gave us, which is really, really silly. Um, I don't know. I, I, I've talked about this before on the channel, but I don't, I'm not really a huge Unknown fan. Unknown, fan, Unknown is a character that a lot of people love. A lot of people love Unknown. A lot of people think Unknown is like a perfect original killer, and that's great. I'm glad you enjoy them. That's awesome. Uh, I find them very, very clunky, and I know there are other people out in their community that also find them very clunky. So this is an update that made them even more clunky. <laughs> so you, if you're on the tipping point of finding Unknown kind of tolerable, but maybe a little clunky, you're probably going to find him clunky now. And if you didn't like him already, you're going to like him even less. Billy and Twins are like essentially the same. Low Pro being only able to deep wound at best now is huge, and a lot of people have been requesting that for a while, but otherwise the character kind of shifted more from like A plus tier to A tier, which is not that big of a shift, um, which I think is kind of what they were aiming for and what the community really wanted was not Billy to be nerfed back down or get anywhere close to the overheat Billy days, but to be in a spot where like he wasn't getting overdrive as much and he wasn't as oppressive, which is kind of what they did here. In terms of the killer perks, uh, new Zanshin tactics, which is weird to say, because if I told you this a year, you'd probably not believe me. Uh, Zanshin tactics is kind of busted. I ended up just leaving pallets down and won a lot of chases with these, even on M1 killers. Uh, this one probably needs a cooldown <laughs> because currently it's just set to a duration, but there's no cooldown. So if like the survivors still had a pallet, 
still get the duration. <laughs> so might need a small cooldown to keep it from just being like constantly on, especially on characters like Xeno, like Dracula, who I happen to play, um, <laughs> who really benefit from leaving balance down. Uh, Pyramid Head, excellent example. Pyramid Head, ugh. Pyramid Head with this perk, good luck. Predator is nice, uh, but it's like, if I could equate it to anything, it's kind of like Xanshin's little brother. If you're going to want one perk over the other, you might as well just run Xanshin right now. Predator's still nice, though, and I think that the fact that it is a teachable on the Wraith is really nice because it is a perk that, you know, a lot of people, when they're getting used to, you know, tracking survivors, will lose, lose chase really easily when somebody goes around the corner or somebody ducks or does like a... Uh, corner tech or something like that um but you know obviously this just highlights them when that happens so i think it's a nice mix between something that's generally feels nice but also is very beginner friendly which is nice because it's on a free character machine learning was actually nice to get value out of uh and seems balanced by the fact that it only applies to one gen so it's not like you're getting a bunch of <laughs> machine learning procs uh because you only really apply it to one gen so that kind of limits it a fair bit and that was kind of always the biggest problem with machine learning was that um it had, it had such an intensely difficult to achieve trigger state. Uh, they tried to buff the effect to kind of mitigate that, but still there were just matches where it would go by and not get used. So now the fact that like the trigger state has been uh, mitigated a little bit makes it actually usable, which is really nice. Genetic limits is also really cool. It feels like kind of like a better languid touch. Like if you like the thing that languid touch does, but you find languid touch kind of like inconsistent, genetic limits is like a more consistent version of that. Um, on Xenomorph, it's going to be kind of hard for me to like think about which one I want to use in terms of like a like a casual build because languid touch works well with Xenomorph because crawler mode does not disturb crows unless you actively like step on them. Um, but genetic limits is always guaranteed through the injury state. So I can use it because, you know, it's an M2 killer. So I don't know. There's actually some like, you know, some some picks that I could have a little bit of variety when it comes to my exhaustion perks, which I like a lot. Crowd control seems kind of meh. Like I got the same value of it that I like usually would run in uh, crowd control anyway. What I will say is, you know, skipping ahead when I ended up playing survivor later, this is very anti solo queue. <laughs> very anti-solo queue because somebody could just like panic vault a window and you as the survivor come up to it later and go oh crap i guess he had crowd control <laughs> and suddenly you just lose the chase because there is no way unless you were a four man to know that oh he's got crowd control guys um so i just you just end up running into blocked windows and going oh well i wish i had known that was a thing <laughs> so it does have that edge in that regard moving on to the survivor perks uh blood rush is dumb and cannot make it to love the way it is um this was probably the perk i used the most when i was testing the new changes um so i'm sure if you've played killer you understand that one well-placed balance landing one well-placed life one well-placed sprint burst could change an entire game based on how it's used, right? Now imagine if you could just do that twice. <laughs> and that is Blood Rush. Like, they tried to turn it into an anti-tunnel perk by having it only activatable uh, after you've been hooked, but it was just really silly. I had one instance on Larry's where we were facing an Oni, and um, I went up to the top of Larry's in the main building, um, and I dropped, or the main operating theater, it's not a main building, the whole place is a building. Sorry, I was going to say that before I got corrected. Um, jumped off the top of the operating theater, got balanced. And by the time he got close to me, I blood rushed and activated my life and just got away for free. <laughs> because uh, he was already going to have a hard time catching up to me because I balanced landing. Uh, but then I had to contend with life and was just like, okay, I guess I guess she's just gone now. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, the, the funniest thing that I got in terms of value out of this is I just ran sprint burst by itself and blood, uh, blood, uh, blood rush. And um, I would, you know, get hooked in basement uh, sprint burst out of the basement and then blood rush and then sprint burst away. <laughs> so like, I was just like nowhere in the vicinity of basement at all. Um, there was this really instance of this happening on Borgo where I literally was in the main building basement, got unhooked, sprint bursted, and then blood rushed and then sprint bursted again and ended up literally over at shack. <laughs> like I literally cleared the entire map. This is strong. This is, this is absurdly strong. This, I... Fun for a PTB. Please don't make it hit live, though. 
Queen Gambit, uh, the effect wasn't as awful as I thought, it, but it's still like free gen speed for literally zero reason. Um, and I find it going off a lot during my games and uh, for a reason that we will talk about soon, I didn't really get a, a full view of like how good uh, Quick Gambit was because my teammates were not so great for a very specific reason we'll talk about <laughs> later. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Quick Gambit just giving free gen speed for no reason. Uh, somebody had a good suggestion in chat. I think it was B-Man. Uh, had said that um, maybe it should operate on like furthest gens, kind of like an inverted deja vu, where deja vu car uh, just kind of targets three gens. Uh, maybe it should target the three farthest gens, kind of like a more of like an inverted corrupt now that I think about it. Yeah, that's probably a better uh, comparison. But yeah, kind of like an inverted corrupt, maybe something like that. Yeah, no, this is silly. We're gonna live forever is actually really fun, but never did really save a game for us. It does. It definitely feels like a kind of like an old Dead by Daylight thing. It still doesn't have its stacks back for extra blood points, which is really sad. But it did feel like kind of like almost nostalgic to be able to use. We're gonna live forever again. Um, once again, I played in solo queue, so like it didn't really save any games. But maybe it would be very very frustrating against the Swift. And here's the thing I was talking about earlier, the teamwork perks uh, from uh, Hinato and uh, Talita, um, uh, I got buffs, but I these perks aren't good, but people seem to think they're good now, and people were actively throwing, both as killer and as survivor, the entire time <laughs> that I was uh, playing the PTB. People were throwing to get value out of these perks. I saw so many like, little buddy systems that just stayed grouped up and threw the whole game just to try and get value out of these perks, and they were just eating dirt <laughs> for it. These are still not good. Please don't throw a game trying to get value out of this. Holy moly, was it frustrating when I was playing on Survivor, and I was just two people who would not separate, not get on gens, not do anything. They just wanted to be in their little buddy system. It was awful. I think uh, also the uh, thing I almost forgot to talk about was the Mori changes are awful. Uh, the big Mori blood point uh, offering that they suggested to us that they said, okay, well, we're taking away your ability to Mori multiple survivors outside of perks, but we'll give you blood points. The highest one is 30k only. Not Ming the Ebony. That is 30k only. Why would I not just run a normal blood point offering? What a silly, sad excuse for a replacement. That is... That is like if you told me that last year that they would gonna they were gonna be doing this, I would tell you you were just making stuff up and you were joking, because it's that it's laughably bad, the 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 thing they decided to replace that with, and I do not know at all why they thought that was a good idea. That was incredibly silly, and the fact that they are still sticking to it in this PTP despite uh, how awful it is probably means it's going through, which really sucks. I, I think a lot of people are blinded by the fact that like oh cool Cypress Mori based kit, and they're so enthused about that that they're kind of just forgetting the other two Moris. If, and realizing that if you want to get multiple mores or a you know one of the challenges that props up frequently in the rifts will kill them by my own hand will now be extremely hard because you're gonna have to do it one by one by one by one so uh, you know brandon will remember that when you know you guys that are like oh my god the new mores is something so cool i'll remember that when you guys are struggling with that challenge here down the line in the new rift i'll be like oh yeah remember when we used to have mores that you could more more than one person so you could get that challenge done in like one or two games yeah you advocated against that so Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Overall, I only really liked about like 30 of these changes and just based on the way the gameplay flow was going in the PTB, I'm not too enthusiastic about the direction the game is going. <laughs> um, obviously, we started off on the wrong foot of like, hey, we're just going to like soft delete a character. And if you don't like it, I guess you'll just have to wait a year. <laughs> I guess you just got to wait. Enjoy! <laughs> like, this could theoretically happen to any of our characters. To a Pinhead, to a Xenomorph, to anybody. Like, anybody that just, they don't like the fact that they have two eye of a killer eight, they can just be like, nope, that's unhealthy, boop, and just destroy your character at will. And you, you, there's nothing you can do. You just gotta wait for um, in a, a very, very long amount of time to be able to enjoy your character again. Oh, also, uh, before I got too carried away, I forgot to mention, Distortion's not really dead. I actually used distortion for a couple games in the PTB and it was actually fairly helpful. Like, um, you know, I blocked a lethal and went, oh crap, well, there goes my one use. And then I, you know, it's kind of like, oh, well, see, this perk does suck. But then like I got in chase and then I vaulted a window and I blocked their eye all ears and it like saved my life. <laughs> and I was like, oh, neat, cool. <laughs> and that happened a lot where it'd be like, okay, well, I, okay, now my or reading perk or my one stack of distortion is gone. Oh, wait, they had Xantia. Now I'm just like, now I'm safe here where I was cooked before, you know? Like, it was actually more helpful than I thought it would be. So I'm glad it's like, 
in a more healthy spot, but also not dead at the same time. I'm very happy for them. Yeah, I don't know. I generally don't like about 70% of this patch. I think generally most of the changes should be walked back or at least adjusted. Like it just, it seems like they, I don't know, like it seems like they weren't talking to the right people when they were coming up with a lot of these changes. And especially with like the Mori stuff, they're just fixing stuff that wasn't broken. So like, I don't know why they're doing that, but. Oh well. What was your guys' favorite change from the PTB? What was your least favorite change with the PTBD? Let me know down in the comments below if you wanna you wanna gloat about a really good change that you think they came up with, or if you wanna vent about how bad a change that is coming is. Let me know. But other than that, that's gonna be it for today's video. But I do upload daily, so I will see you tomorrow. Other than that, I will see you when I see you. Goodbye.